Hi guys, so today I want to talk about the final boss of chapter 3 in this game, Cromer. Since this is probably one of the hardest boss in gacha game recent memory, I will give you guys advices and things that you should probably do. So this boss fight consists of two phases. The first phase, in my opinion, is actually harder. So yeah, you want to watch out for her first phase. It's probably because you won't have that much ego to play around and you will and I say will take a lot of damage in the first phase because you are going to lose a lot of the clashes. And also there are some gimmicks that is found on the dungeon before you encounter Cromer herself. Most notably is the sign ego gift that will either uh, debuff or buff your sin player. You need to find three of this sign located here on the dungeons. Pause if you need more time to see properly. This ego gift will buff your Sinclair if you have 3 of it, but will debuff your Sinclair if you have less. So might as well grab all of it and use your Sinclair against Cromer. The buff that you get for using Sinclair is pretty good. It allows your Sinclair to take 20% reduced damage from Cromer and also gain an attack up. Now, the huge thing is the debuff. If you don't get 3 of this sign, uh, your Sinclair will have a bind and a paralyze. That is a pretty i would say detrimental uh, debuff especially your paralyze right if you get paralyzed that means a uh, one coin in your attack will be rendered useless it's actually really huge so yeah it's either you don't use sinclair or use sinclair uh, with his buff up and there's also some ego gift that is really beneficial for you, most notably the snickering thumb that you can get in the third floor of the dungeon near the entrance to the hill where you fight Cromer. This ego gift will give you 10% damage boost if you want to clash, absolutely amazing. Don't ever take any healing or defensive ego gift, trust me, Cromer will kill you in like 2 attacks anyway so might as well boost your defenses instead. I've tried taking some healing and defensive ego gift and it doesn't help one bit in my opinion. Now that you already know what to look for in the dungeon, let's talk about the first phase of Cromer fight. Uh, her first phase is where all of your blonde characters that you have put sweat and tears to level them will be rendered almost kind of useless here. You see her first phase resists blunt damage and all of her attacks are slash and pierce, which most of your blunt units are probably going to be weak to. In this phase, my tips is to hold your ego to win clashes. Don't use your ego when your basic skills are already dominating the uh, opposing skills, right? Always save your ego to win clashes that you shouldn't uh, be able to win without your ego. Use it when you don't have any option left to win clashes with Cromer. Because if you let her win any of the clashes, especially with her pierce skill, so she has slashes and pierce skill, right? Her slash damage is not too bad. It's still bad. It can probably still stagger your units, but her pierce skill is really devastating. If you let that through, your character is going to be almost always getting staggered and you don't want that. Because of her first phase, I actually recommend you guys to use characters that can tank her pierce and slash skill really well. Someone like Basic Dawn is really good, Basic Don Quixote is really good, Otis is really good, Otis is amazing in this fight, and the double zero Foss are also really good. Uh, for her first base, for Cromer first base. The first time I beat this boss, I actually used Otis instead of the double zero boss that you see here. And after you went through the first phase, your blunt damage character can do some work again here. Regardless of like her first phase, you still want to take some blunt damage for her second phase. Since some of her second phase body parts are fatal against blunt damage, I use triple zero uh, Ishmael, a max up type 3, and also the basic Heathcliff as my blunt damage contributor here. You will see at the end that my Heathcliff is actually dealing the second most damage in the team uh, after my Ishmael. It's actually really insane. So for her second phase, it's just your usual abnormality spell, right? But she gains a new skill that deals blunt damage now. So you want to watch out for that. When you see her using this skill right here, you will know because uh, her targeting arrow will become kind of like a dotted line right here. You want to win this clash no matter what because this skill is a highly damaging AoE skill. Alright, 
use your highest value ego right here if you lose this clash you are done my friend you are dead and that is pretty much it when it comes to defeating chroma really so yeah let's just do the tldr here tldr use slash and pierce resisting units for her first phase use your ego to win clashes not to deal damage watch out for her aoe skill and phase 2 and also don't use damage or win rate auto please if you don't want to let uh, her attack go through it's actually better to just play it manually right don't ever ever touch the auto choose system in this game it sucks it's better to try and win a neutral class uh, than actually letting her attack be unopposed it's really just devastating if you let her attack goes on the post you always want to at least try uh, to be neutral on the clash if your uh, character doesn't have any options you can use their ego right use their ego to win the clash or use a defensive skill but you still have to kind of see uh, the opposing coins value right before you use your defensive skill and I think that's all for my tips against Kromer. And I wish you guys the best of luck out there defeating her. And yeah, just like usual guys, goodbye, have a nice day, and keep playing gacha games.